-hmm. That scares me. The immigration. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. think all Trump's doing is he's he's talking to his base, right? So uh, there's really no rhyme or reason outside of trying to get his base rallied. Well, you want to keep the best doctors and medical experts in the world out of this country if they're foreigners, you know. <laughs> I don't know. You know we, usually start, we usually start with uh, something very uplifting. Um, so um, I'm sorry that I kind of made it, you know, a very negative statement to, <laughs> to start us off. <laughs> Maybe some other people have, like somebody like Scarlett, who is full of love and compassion, or or anybody else, can start us off. <laughs> um, yes, we're gonna have, both have Randa start us off, and we're gonna have uh, Scarlett start us off. I just want to apologize to you all. I did a weird thing with Zoom, and people had some trouble getting in, and so I'm I'm asking if Jewel can send yet one more email and i so apologize for all these emails but um for people who've had trouble getting in now people are getting in yeah. uh, every week i learn something important about zoom and this week i've learned something else the, the key for me was not to try to enter with my email, uh, email address but rather to, to sign in through google is that, that what happened yeah okay that Okay, um, you should not have had to sign in at all, and I really apologize for that. Anyway, um, maybe uh, Amy, I know, had trouble before. So, Jewel, can you, if, oh, Amy's in. Good, good, Amy's in. Okay, Finally. okay. Hello, welcome, everyone. Welcome. Uh, we're going to, uh, uh, maybe we'll mute everyone. And Randa, are you in? I'm okay, I'm going to mute everyone. Randa, unmute yourself and we'll all sing with you, Randa. Okay. Okay, lyrics are on chat. Uh, woke up this morning. Uh, same old uh, wonderful open. But you have to, okay. Randa, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, I just did. I got okay. it. Okay, all right. <laughs> I woke up this morning with my mind. Hey, freedom. I woke up this morning with my mind. I woke up this morning with my mind. I woke up this morning with my mind. Yes, ooh, stayed on freedom. Hallelujah, yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now I woke up this morning with my mind just stayed on justice. I woke up this morning with my mind oh, stayed on justice. Well, I woke up this morning with my mind now oh, stayed on justice. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now I'm singing and sitting with my mind just a state on freedom. I'm singing and sitting with my mind stayed on freedom. I'm sitting and singing with my mind just a state on freedom. Hallelujah, 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 yeah. Perfectly in key, too. Welcome everyone. I'm going to invite Scarlett to bring us into this meeting. I want to see if anybody is here for the first time. Anybody joining Tuesdays with Tillis for the first time? Okay. Uh, and I just want to invite everyone to um, remember what it's like to stand on the sidewalk of 310 New Bern Avenue 
<laughs> in the rain, in the cold, in the heat, uh, and what that what that feels like to really see each other and feel the ground under our feet. And now, um, Scarlett, unmute yourself. Oh, oh, wait, 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 I, you have to mute yourself. Just give me a second to mute everybody, okay? All right. Can you all hear me? Yes. All right. Good morning, beautiful people. Week 169, how many of you have been binge watching TV, uh, revisiting some of your favorite movies? One of my favorite ones is Forrest Gump. I haven't watched it again, but I love the quote, life is like a box of chocolates. But someone told me that life is like a box of crayons. And I think that's apropos of our Tuesday with Tillis family. Now, can, can you see my box of crayons? Can everyone see? Suddenly I felt like Mr. Rogers. Um, <laughs> my box has 64 colors, not just the simple eight. And it's filled with wonderful, wonderful colors. And our Tuesdays with Tillis family is also filled with vibrant colors. We have many religious affiliations, races, cultures, gender, sexual orientation, economic status, ages, and abilities. In my box of crayons, I have the regular colors, you know those, but I have exceptional colors such as magnificent brown, Maybe that's George and Cliff and our Homeland Security companions. I've got happy colors like bubblegum pink and totally teal. Maybe that's Amy and Sandy and Lucy and Julie and Kathy and Pam. I've got bright colors, sandy beach and starry night. That's Dewey and Dottie and Nancy and Libby. I've got thoughtful colors. Deep Violet, Doyle, Donna, Pat, Mary, Lori, Herb, Mark, Jeff, Rosemary, Ann, and Olinda. I've got fiery colors, Hot Chili, Elena, Tony, Tara, Al, Rebecca, and Faisal. I've got verdant colors, Cool Mint, Kathy and Keith, Andy, Dave, and Cecil. Oh, and I've got fun colors, peachy keen. That's all our raging grannies. I've got dependable colors, evergreen. That's our Mike and Michael and Penny and Bessie and Galia. I've got calming colors, lovely lavender, Rochelle, John, Walter, Nancy. I've got encouraging colors, go for the gold. And that's Jade and Jewel and Gerardo. I've got Misty Blue, though, for our missing members. And that's Peggy and Jackie and Sherry and those not on Zoom. And I've got spunky colors, Rockin' Red and Wildberry. That's our Randa. And I've got dynamic colors, Sunburst and Quicksilver, Karen Ziegler. If your name wasn't mentioned, there's a color for you. As I said, my box holds 64. Now, to be honest, some of my colors are blunt. Some of my crayons are broken stubs. Some the paper is torn. Some have been misused, but they're still in my box. Sometimes our colors may rub us the wrong way, or maybe, just maybe, they blend to make another hue. Our colors lean on one another in our Tuesday with Tillis family. And my box has 
a sharpener, just as we have our sharpener. And that's our weekly Tuesday with Tiller, Tillis gathering. And so now we gather. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Randa? Yes. Will you sing will you sing your song for me and us? Okay. All right. So this is the one we've heard this one before. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got grief and we've got fear, but still we are all sheltering here. Well, we will rise up out of the valley trying to get home. Mm -hmm. We find our strength and we share our pride. Nobody can steal what lives inside. We will rise up out of the valley trying to get home. Yes, now we've got grief and we've got fear, but we still are all sheltering here. But we will rise up out of the valley, trying to get home. You know, we find our strength, we share our pride. Nobody can steal what lives inside. But we will rise up out of the valley, trying to get home. I know. I know we will rise up out of the valley to ride to get home. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sometimes I just need to hear her sing that. Uh, I, I want to um, really welcome Donna Kay, who's here for the first time. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and I want to welcome everyone who's here. And I want to invite everyone to take a deep breath. And I, I find I am just um, stopped by the level of ignorance that we, uh, that we are up against right now. As we speak, as you know, there are protesters in Raleigh uh, and people have been protesting around the country. And uh, I'm just completely gobsmacked by, um, by what I'm reading on the internet. The conspiracy theories, the completely unconscious and completely shocking racism. Uh, you know, this is a, this is a white thing. <laughs> People uh, doing this protest um, and not thinking about who is really being harmed uh, by this virus and by this quarantine. I, I wanna invite anyone who wants to speak about what's on your heart and your mind today, and it's okay for you to unmute yourself. And I just wanna, um, I'm gonna stop talking because I want as many people as possible to be able to speak. So I want to be mindful and invite you to be mindful just to speak briefly what's on your heart and on your mind that you'd like to share with everyone. Hi, this is Donna. Since Welcome. I knew, I thought maybe I'll say something so people will get a sense of who I am. Okay. Um, so I'm active with Neighbors on Call, and I also have a listserv with Nan Friedman and, and um, work with Patty Reiser, was part of the Stamp NC Blue initiative. and 
when I saw those protesters uh, open NC, I thought we have got to have a progressive response. We can't let that unanswered. And I um, reached out to Pat, to Karen, and I said, does anybody do anything around some sort of digital presence? And I heard that you were um, thinking about that. And so I wanted to lend my, and I've got 500 people on a listserv behind me that can also um, maybe join in where appropriate. I'm really just here to um, listen and learn. And I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, yeah, so um, so Indivisible, Brianna Bro, who's visited us before, she was one of the masterminds behind um, uh, Flip NC, has kind of designed a whole thing that I sent as many of you as I possibly could. And if you would like to get a copy of that, please put your email in the chat um, and Jewel or I will send it to you. Um, the idea is to have an online uh, presence, especially to use social media. We do want to support Governor Cooper. Um, there's also some graphics. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Sandy? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I just want to say we need to watch carefully who's involved in these uh, protests. It's not just MAGA people. It's gun people. Mm -hmm. It might be some Russian operatives. J just watch and read. I'm Joan, and I just want to say thanks to Karen for the emails. They're very inspirational. And I really enjoy reading them and yes. tips for doing things for, you know, contributing to uh, like the, the government polls and stuff like that. I, I really appreciate it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs> Doyle. I'm going to let you all unmute yourselves. Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think it's, uh, it's so tragic that at this point in history, we have a president who is so incapable of doing the job and so unwilling to do the job. He's being terribly unfair to the governors. And mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day is going to be responsible for tens, if not hundreds of thousands of deaths. Um, I, we've just got to, to survive this. But it, and also, I think uh, it's got to be obvious to anybody watching him that um, he just he just a disaster. I just don't see how people can support them. It just it just drives me crazy. Uh, unbelievable. Julie. Uh, I like how Juan Gonzalez phrased it this morning when he said, just imagine the diff just imagine what it would be like if all those protesters were black and Latino with the with the arms. Thank yes. you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate you saying that. I, you know, I was trying to copy this this uh little meme from Facebook and I couldn't do it, but it was you know, the people with their guns on the state houses, I mean, the huge guns, assault rifles on the top exactly. saying, why is this okay? And then Colin Kaepernick on his knee saying, and this isn't. Right. And, and uh, yes, thank you so much for that. Yes. Allowing all those, those protesters in with um, automatic weapons, standing in the balcony of the state house in Kentucky, all I could think of is now, if they were Black Panthers, that would be mm -hmm. a little different scenario, perhaps. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think continuing to look at this with a, a racial analysis is really crucial. Um, and who's getting really hurt by this virus most? Who's dying disproportionately? Right. Karen Bearden? Yeah, hi. 
Um, I hadn't seen that gun photo yet. That would freak me out. But I did see the photo a couple of days ago of, um, I think it was in Denver, and the um, health care workers out in the middle of the street, you know, blocking the stupid people yes. in the cars that were going around. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. It's yes. Yes. Elena. Karen um, and, and, and family, last night, a North Carolina Justice Center had an amazing, amazing, amazing program about the impact of COVID-19 on uh, people of color. And Dr. William Munn had a map up there. Yes. I get emotional from 1860. Yes. In the state of North Carolina. And it was tied directly to slavery. And it was like a hockey stick going through the state, starting in Northampton. Yes. All the way down. And then it kind of went back. It looked like a J. And you see today, today, the most impacted counties and communities follow the exact same path. Exactly. It was so stunning. It was so breathtaking that it, it was. Tony and I sat there next to each other just crying. Yeah. Um, we all know people in those communities and it's poor folk. And um, it, it, they will, I will share it. Um, um, Karen, I'm sure you can share the link. It, it, it was stunning. It was stunning. Yesterday on the Board of Elections um, decision about a change in the verbiage to allow uh, more uh, uh, wider authority by the director and the board to include not only hurricane, but the word pandemic. You should have heard kind of like the same people that are downtown right now. It was also disgusting. I spoke, Tony spoke. Good. But the majority of the people that spoke were opposed to it. So for whatever that's worth. But, but last night, the Justice Center, Nicole Dozier and her group, including Rebecca, amazing job. I would strongly recommend everybody taking the time and watching. Yeah, I, I saw that too. Yeah, Lori, you were on that too. Uh, unmute yourself, honey. Um, I am unmuted, I think. This is um, oh, Diane and then Lori. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lori. Okay. No, go ahead, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't. I didn't know you were keeping track there. Well, anyway, it's great to be with you all and to see you. Um, yeah, I look forward to watching that in the Justice Center. I missed it. I was just on their event just before this, and they were giving a sort of state of the work they're doing around COVID, especially around um, labor and interpreting some of the laws that and labor. Uh, unemployment benefits, et cetera. So that probably is a, rec there's a recording of it if you want to hear it. But a couple of things I took away from that, and then I'll mention about the election. One is that, you know, our state, because we have a Democratic governor with a red General Assembly, is really in a tough position because we need to reelect him and we need to reelect as many Democrats as we can. And at the same time, walking this line with a recalcitrant um, General Assembly. So this issue around the election is and opening up the state is something that we're both going to have to monitor and support the best way we can. And one of the things that's going to hit soon is the return of our large numbers of migrant farm workers who will be able to get access because of their visas. But on the other hand, we'll have none of the protections and resources that are going to be needed, which then could impact the respreading. You know, right now we're on this downward trajectory and the state has done very well by comparison. So I'm just putting that in everyone's mind as something that we should be paying attention to because we are going to have to put extra pressure on the governor to address that. You know, his response has been very measured around the prisons and uh, yeah. Even the nursing homes, you know, you could say that was a little late. So just being aware of this new population that's among us, but it's going to increase as we move into these coming months. 
around the election, which matters to me a lot, and I know to all of you, um, that this election for at the national level is going to be run at the margins, meaning very, very small numbers. I mean, his number is stuck at 47 percent, which is where it has been all along. And I don't think there's much hope of it going down below that. I mean, that is his number. And the reason his number allowed him to win in 16 is because we were not there. We have more numbers. We just weren't there to counteract that 47 percent. And North Carolina, as you know, is one of the states that's going to matter in that margin of victory. So I'm just encouraging all of you to figure out where you feel comfortable in the effort of voter education and voter engagement in this COVID environment. And it is much more difficult, but it is going to be, there are a lot of virtual ways to be engaged and just find a place that you feel your values match, whether it's hooking up with You Can Vote or Democracy NC or a partisan, you know, the partisan groups that are in your precinct. Uh, Neighbors on Call is a great organization for finding ways to engage, Flip NC. But we are going to need like disciple work to find and help the voters that are out there. A second thing I want to bring up is this vote by mail campaign that everyone is on top of or wants. We have no excuse absentee balloting already in North Carolina. We have 17 days of early voting. We have to assume the worst case scenario, which is none of that is gonna be changed by the General Assembly. And I agree, if you heard the comments of yesterday, it's incredible that there is such opposition to, to access to voting, which benefits both sides. You know, I pointed that out in my remarks when, that I made. So it's going to be like almost a one-on-one -on -one education to help people with vote by mail. And the reason I say that is because if we have a vote by mail system that we have now, it's very cumbersome. It requires a lot of steps. And if it doesn't change, we're not going to get the numbers that people expect to get. We're going to get also a lot of ballots that are going to get tossed because they're not going to be done properly. So I am encouraging um, everyone who has a network to find those cracks in your network where you can enter, whether it's somebody you know who's in a nursing home, that you can help them learn how to help people in the nursing homes fill out their applications. Whether you have elderly friends who, even though they're well-educated, et cetera, may have difficulty with all the steps that it's gonna take to fill out those ballots because I don't think we're gonna get much um, mitigation on that. And if the ballots are not well managed on either side, it's gonna to lead to litigation. And if you thought <laughs> the 2000 election was bad with hanging chads, wait till we get to vote by mail in places that are not used to vote by mail, which, you know, at high numbers. So we can't compare ourselves to Oregon and Washington where they've been doing this for 10 years we cannot open these floodgates without understanding that there is um, another side of problems, legal problems that will come if it's not managed well. So I'm happy to take questions about that, but I think that we have to look at what we have and work with what we've got and make it better because um, I don't think we're gonna get much more. And that also means encouraging people to go to early vote earlier because we tend to waste 15 days of early voting and then everybody shows up at the end and you still end up with lines. So if we're gonna use social distancing as a reason to, you know, and we need to use social distancing, I mean, we need to use early voting more and better. There are places we can push with the State Board of Elections, more voting sites, better voting sites where people can spread out and all of that, those things we can get administratively but anything I think we're gonna, you want legislatively, we're not gonna get those. Thank you, Diane. Um, are there, uh, uh, yeah, Mark, and then we're gonna go to Lori. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Diane. I think there are a couple of things. Um, first was, I think that early voting is gonna be a lot more used in the November election. I think, I, I volunteered at the elections for the March uh, primaries. And a lot of people were mentioning that they didn't vote early because they weren't sure who to vote for. They were still making up their minds, 
because we had such a convoluted, you know, Democratic primary, right? So I think that that will not be so much a factor in November, at least that's my opinion. And then number two, I agree with you that I think um, absentee balloting is going to be crucial. And uh, there was an article in the paper today that turns out that that was quite critical to the uh, liberal wins in Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Wisconsin. So, um, so it turned out that that the absentee ballots, even though that's not typically a state that does, um, you know, mail-in balloting, it turned out to be really important in their in their election. So, I think I think we need to support whatever we actually get in November and leverage what we get as much as we can. Yeah, uh, Lori. Yeah. Um, uh, two things. One about the absentee balloting. What I understand is that um, now there's no excuse absentee balloting. They don't have to give a reason. So, the, in a sense, it's equivalent to mail in. I want to make sure that I understand that. Number one, and the other thing is back to you know the um, panel discussion last night on the disparate uh, disparate. Um, effect of COVID on the African American community. Um, that um, map, that J-shaped map of uh, the most significantly populated slavery counties and the cotton belt and the black belt, and now the counties that are least prepared and least able to deal with the COVID um, pandemic are in the sand hills, and um, and I do believe, and I might be mistaken. Please correct me if I'm wrong. That the NC Black Alliance is dealing with um, voter voter support and um, COVID support and census issues in that J shape in those J shaped counties. And I might be wrong about that, but those are the counties perhaps that we can offer more support because they have the least, uh, least resources. Um, so I think that NC Black Alliance is, I would add to Flip NC and Dem NC, and you can vote, it's places that we can um, support um, that is outside of our 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 home counties. What can I just? Uh, yes. Say, the fact is, we have had no excuse absentee ballot balloting since I think two thousand and four. Okay. But we just have not. It just has not been a big part of our voter turnout. So my point was not about having it or not having it. It was about helping people to use it so that they, those votes actually will count. Okay. Because if we just have people now asking for absentee ballots because they think that's what we want them to do, and then they don't use them correctly, we're worse off because now we have no votes because they will get thrown away. Okay. And the reason for that, because I have helped people do this in nursing homes, is that um, now the rule is that you need two witnesses right. to sign the absentee ballot or a notary, one or the other. It's not hard to get two witnesses, but if you don't read the instructions, um, it won't be sent in correctly and people will throw it out. That's right. I'm going to suggest that it is hard to get two witnesses if you live alone in a COVID environment. And that's exactly what they're counting on. You know, right. one thing it just occurred to me while we we're talking, we could all become notaries. If we become notaries, one, you only need one witness. And it does give you access to places that they might not let you in because they're not letting you in to a nursing home unless you, have, you know someone. They don't even let you in if you do know someone. But if you're a notary, you might be considered essential. It just occurred to me. So maybe it's easy to become a notary online. So. You want to find out? That's a great thing to find out. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, right. good idea. Really good idea. Okay. Who's next? Yes, Mark, again, I think we're really going to need to pay attention to what happens with this topic, because I think it's when the legislature comes back, I think there's going to be actions taken that we're going to have to watch really closely. Yeah. It'll be different in November than it is right now. Mm -hmm. Good. 
Good. Uh, Lady Liberty. Um, my understanding, and I wonder if Diane knows the answer to this, is we still have a system where poll workers uh, or some representatives of the state uh, of the uh, county board of elections decide the uh, signatures match the signature on your registration. And that's just craziness. Um, I'm not positive about that. What happens at the, I mean, there are a lot of different things. One, now we have vote registration by mail and they are looking for signatures there. If you have a signature on file at the Department of Motor Vehicle and you need to change your registration or you just need to register, we do now have registration by mail and that's something you should spread throughout your networks. But it is very limited in that they already have to have a signature that they can match your voter registration signature to. Right. So one of the things that we are doing in addition, or we all could be doing at DMV, correct? DMV, is spreading that option around and also perhaps pressuring that they allow you to request your absentee ballot when you do your voter registration on mail, at mail. Because the other part of the absentee ballot now is you have to download a form and fill out the form and mail it in and then get your ballot. That's what I mean about it being very clumsy. It's no excuse, but it's very cumbersome. Yeah. So our, our help in getting people to get that. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. That's why I think we need to start quickly. Um, I had said something to Karen earlier about um, absentee ballots, and um, because you have to request it, that takes more time yeah. um, and then get it back to you. And I was really alarmed to hear how many people in Wisconsin just never got their ballot. They requested them and never got them. So I think we need to get people mobilized on this earlier rather than later. You actually can request your ballot today. The concern is that people will request their ballot, get them, lose them, right. not return them, and then they won't get to vote when they show up because they forgot they even requested an absentee ballot. So there's a lot of pitfalls with this. That's my point. This, yeah. is, not a, this is not something that is going to be a solution necessarily for us. The, the other point about Wisconsin, because I was involved with the um, phone banking in Wisconsin, they already had an on the ground since 2008, very granular organizing program that never really fell apart between elections. So when they had to get engaged to get people to vote by mail, they just inactivated those. And that was one of the reasons they were so effective. I must say, we do not have that level of granular organization here to have that level of impact. And now you see that the judge that they defeated that has unrecused himself. So it may end up, they may end up still purging those 235,000 voters. It's just really horrific. The whole thing is so horrific. But I agree, the earlier we start in educating people and talking to people about this and giving them the real information, it is not just let's go vote by mail. That's the point I want to make. Let's yeah. use what we have, especially early voting, and help people use that more and get involved with that. That I think is a is a better road for us than trying to get everybody to vote by mail. Wasn't uh, uh, wasn't uh, online registration approved? In it, North it was approved, yeah, but it's only for people who already have a signature at the DMV. So if you've just moved to North Carolina and you do not have a North Carolina driver's license that's not going to help you. You have to get the driver's license then, well, which you can do, you can apply, you know. Anyway, I, it's got, it also has limitations. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else about the election process? Uh, yes, Julie. Uh, I'd just like to add my uh, personal experience to that. Uh, I moved to Raleigh in 1984, and I believe I voted once at my precinct on Green Road. Uh, I went to New York in 1989 and 
It was only this last uh, primary that I voted here in New York. I have always voted by absentee for 20 years. And I have to say, I was always impressed with the, with the North Carolina system for absentee ballots. However, I work in law firms. So I always have witnesses and notaries, and that's not an issue. Mm-hmm. And, and it does require you to be very precise in reading those <laughs> instructions. And I'm, and I'm good about that thing, that, that sort of thing. So um, I, I think a better option would be the early voting. In fact, they ne- we never understood, they never understood in New York about the early voting here because we didn't have early voting there. But I never changed my voter registration because I always thought my vote counted more down here. So even, and since I had a home here, I just always voted by absentee, but but it does require a level of detail that a lot of people would not have, and they would need assistance. So if I don't know if I'll be here, then I didn't expect to be here now, but because of the lockdown, I, I am, and it's possible Thank that I'll you. be here through the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Okay. Thank you. you. Register here. <laughs> Okay, um, I, oh, I, am. <laughs> I, I just want to change course just a little bit. Um, Mike and some of the rest of us were on Cal Cunningham's call over the weekend. Uh, we definitely have to get rid of Tillis. I know we all <laughs> agree on that as well as Trump. Um, and Mike's been uh, trying to invite Cal Cunningham to come join us. And Mike, you want to give us a report? Sure. <clears throat> First of all, um, we tried to invite him to speak to us uh, at one of our gatherings virtually in the month of May, and I got a response back that he's booked up completely for May. So I came back with him today uh, and he asked him, based on the fact that uh, we are open, if he wants to do it in May or June, 1,300 uh, of our cohorts that are involved in Tuesdays with Tillis and many election organizers that are also affiliated with us would love to have him come speak for uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, hear his thoughts and take some questions. So that's where we stand there. Um, Saturday's town hall, uh, I found him uh, um, sort of refreshing. Uh, He's certainly not Tom Tillis. He doesn't have uh, what I thought were totally scripted answers to questions uh, and it wasn't a typical stump speech. I was uh, able to ask one of the questions And what I asked them was, have you endorsed the poor people's moral budget? If not, will you? And will you pledge to make this budget an essential part of your campaign policies? And he told me that he has been, and he told everybody, just not me, that he has been in contact and has had quite a few conversations with Reverend Barber regarding the voting rights, civil rights, uh, the poor people, and other things, but has not talked about the moral budget and was not familiar with it. So I told him I would send him off a link to the budget, which I did today as well, and I would like to follow up with him uh, shortly to see what his thoughts are. Uh, One of the things that I found encouraging was he didn't try to BS his way through through the question I asked him. He says, I really haven't read it. So he was honest in, in that regard, which I found I found to be good. Uh, and as I said before, he would be a welcome relief uh, from Tom Tillis. Obviously, he's not he's not as progressive as I would like, and I'm sure most of the people sitting here today would like. But maybe when when we get there, we can push. You know, hopefully, he wins, and we can push him in that direction. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, I'm taking a deep breath. <laughs> uh, there's something about speaking into the silence. I didn't invite anyone um, to speak who hasn't spoken yet. Karen, I've got something I can show people uh, real quickly. Um, the the uh, reopen NC protest has begun, and uh, got the right picture up there. This is a quick frame grab that I got from WRAL as they started their news at 12 o'clock, and you can see even in this picture you can see they're pretty densely packed. Other video that they've got they are far more densely packed. Of course they were given 
essentially permission by the governor's office to have the protest as long as they all maintain six foot separation. And they're not doing that. You see no masks. Again, other pictures uh, that I watched uh, show even more dense uh, crowding. So that's how they are uh, handling uh, the um, governor's permission, totally ignoring it. They, they, did inter they are interviewing people on both sides, you know, the healthcare workers sitting in front, which very articulate responses, but um, this, the law enforcement are standing there together. And when the reporter was asked about, um, are they enforcing social distancing? He basically said, forget that, you know, there's no way you can do that with the crowd like this. So I think the call to the governor's office on all of this is important. I mean, I think we should be jamming his phone and saying, why is law enforcement not enforcing this? Because you know what's happening in other states. Well, you know why I think, I, you know why? Because I, I have been actually following this group on social media. And um, this, is, this, is, uh, this is really scary. And I, I think that continuing to um, push them may not be the right approach by Cooper. I, I definitely agree that we should be supporting Cooper. Um, but these are people showing up with guns. I mean, one, one thing is, I think that the police are gonna be so happy to see us when we go back to the streets. <laughs> um, it, it, uh, Excuse me, Karen. I think the level of ignorance that we're dealing with, we can't even imagine this level of ignorance. And these people are being fed by conspiracy theories that they actually believe. Yes, Liv, go ahead. Uh-uh, uh-uh, you're muted. I'm thinking about the uh, Silent Sam protest, and it, it's, an, it's essential that the governor stop this protest if there are guns in the hands of these people. That would be his reason to stop this protest. That's, yeah, that's a good reason. It's illegal to have guns, you're right, you're right. <laughs> The problem with, with stopping it at this point is that it's only going to feed the the continued uh, story that the right wing media is, is saying that we are, you know, that, that the governor and, and the states are are causing this problem and are I mean, it's it's the, the I, I posted the John Oliver from this week up on the on the chat a little bit ago. Um, and it's about exactly that. It's it's where are they getting the, the their information from, and it's just it's it's frightening to see um, what it is that people like Rush Limbaugh are telling them, and that yeah. they're willing to believe. And that's and by continuing to feed that by saying, hey, don't you know we got to have the governor shut it down? No, 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 we can't do that. We have to let them do this because if we if we step in there and and stop it it's only going to feed that machine more and it's going to feed trump's base more um so it really just has to be off we have to let it go that that's my feeling too uh, because well, i think well, what he well, wants well, is a civil war that's what he wants well, that's true that's true and and i and so i think he's raising up an army he's encouraging them to bring their guns and we have to be really smart about how we respond to this. Really smart. I was tempted to go down and hand out pamphlets to them. I don't know if this would be very Christian, but it would be <laughs> a form for, un, you know, do not resuscitate. And a post that they put on their door that says, do not enter <laughs> EMS, you're not needed here. Just to protect the front line and for front responders. But I'm not sure if that's a valid thing or not. There have been calls to this house about organizing and going down there. And uh, shocking as it may sound, I said, no, that's just going to feed into it. No. People wanted to surround with cars, um, the whole group. And all three of us said, no. Yeah. Just, just remember, that's, that's what he's trying to do. I mean, it's, it's so incredibly crazy. For him to lead, leave the, well, it's up to them anyway, but say, oh, it's up to the governors. 
and then put out his whole White House reopening statement, which is, you know, it, it makes a certain amount of sense, but it says you have to have a lot of testing before you reopen. And then he tweets that people should show up, you know, with guns because he mentioned the Second Amendment. He wants to see, you know, who will show up if he tells them to show up. And and he's playing with people. And and I think we cannot under overestimate, we cannot overestimate the level of evil that we are dealing with here. You know, like the Civil War, these poor white farmers went to fight for the right of rich white farmers to hold slaves. And they died for that. And these are their descendants showing up at the governor's mansions. Um, it, it's, and, and, and that map from 1860 that showed where the slave plantations were and where the people are now who are most vulnerable to this virus was so powerful. And I think if we think that we're off the plantation now, we're wrong. Karen, may I point out too that that map is exactly the route of the AC, of the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. It starts in Northampton County and goes all the way down through the nine counties. And, it, and that is also the, the strong places for Tar Hill, North Carolina, for the for the hog and the poultry, all of this, we all know this, but to be aware of it again, it's just horrible to to pay it. Uh, I mean, it's it's like we were in tears. Yes, we were. But thank you again for um, for gathering with all of us to be able to to let our hearts be open to the compassion that's necessary to do something um, to try to stop this harm. I, yeah, thank you. I just want to say what Lib said again, because uh, it was a little hard to hear. So that same path through North Carolina is the path of the Atlantic Coast Pipeline, environmental devastation, environmental racism. And that is also where these meatpacking plants are that hire mostly migrant labor, and where people are in terrible harm's way, and where now there are not hospitals because expand uh, Medicaid wasn't expanded, so rural hospitals closed. So, so that uh, it's so great that we have been coming together to be able to be big enough in our hearts and our minds to fully see the magnitude of this and how the climate crisis is connected and the environmental devastation is connected to uh, to this harm. Karen, did you want to talk? Yeah, it, is, it just beat me to it because, um, whoops, there you go. I, I think I'm unmuted. Liv just beat me to it when Elena first talked about that J and I was like, uh-huh, that's the yeah. ACP and yeah. you heard me and Donna talk about that. And there's been connections with COVID and air pollution. Exactly. So it's all so connected, y'all. And then I also want to, and I'll put it in the in the chat, but, um, you know, me, my, my thing is advocacy for my beautiful earth. And it's Earth Day tomorrow, the 50th yes. anniversary of Earth Day tomorrow. And I've shared with some of you um, our Earth Day live event. So I will put that in there. Um, in the chat and also a link to a sign on letter that will be going to governor um, to the governor, um, Senator Berger and Speaker Moore. And we're tying in the both crises, you know, actually the right. crisis that we're in all together, right? With the health crisis, the climate crisis, the equity and everything, you know, all that's together. And we're going to be including the, the North Carolina survival and beyond platform too. We want them to support that. So I wanted to let you all know that. And it's all connected as we know. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it, uh, you know, it, it gets overwhelming, but I think it's great to remember that if we're working on one thing, we're working on everything. So if you're just working on one issue, you're working on everything. Um, we're almost out of time. And uh, Mike, mm -hmm. Michael Eisenberg, can I just say one thing regarding uh, the protests and, and our fearless leader? Yeah. Uh, we, we need to start calling Nancy Pelosi's office and tell her she must invoke the 72-hour cycle, the 72-hour hold, which uh, 
is 5150 number of the section of welfare and institution code, which allows a person with a mental illness to be involuntarily detained for a 72 hour psychi psychiatric hospitalization. Is that man, Trump? This man's out of his mind. We need to start calling him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I assume that's for the president, not for the people with the, on the street. Yeah, <laughs> it's for the president. Uh, he's, not the, he's not the he's the current occupant. He's not a president. OK, um, Pat. I just wanted to say that uh, this is a change of subject, but we need to be supporting Amy McGrath to get rid of Mitch McConnell. Yes. Yes. Thank you. OK, so uh, we're, we're coming to the end. We're going to get rid of Tillis Doyle. Go ahead and Trump, and we're going to get rid of McConnell. And we can do that. We can do that. So uh, all your friends who are bored at home, let's get them all involved in getting out the vote in 2020. There are so many ways to do that. If you did not get an email from Jewel this morning uh, with the Zoom codes, um, uh, you might want to put your email in the chat so that you get one next week, because sometimes people don't want to go searching for their tiny letter for that. Um, and uh, any last words? We're going to have Susan do the benediction after we sing Vote Him Out. Any last words? Yes, I have a last word, because I just heard directly from Reverend Barber. He has not had a significant conversation with uh, Cal Cunningham. Um, no real commitment is his word, and a conversation talking to me is not enough. Okay. So just take that and also take it in the context of how he is presenting himself as a candidate. Um, you know, don't start messing with Reverend Barber. We'll keep pressuring him. We'll keep yeah. pressuring him. Exactly. Karen, I've got a couple things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, y'all. Um, let's see. There is a, I don't know if you know the astounding numbers of indigenous women and men and girls being raped and murdered. And there is going to be an online rally on Saturday from 12 to one um, on this topic. And there are all these speakers organized and everything, and I'm helping with it. Um, so if you can join us 12 to one, uh, well, it might be 20, 10 to one, I'm not sure, but I'll send an, I'll send an email out on this Saturday. And also I, I emailed you guys, or many of you guys, um, a Violence Against Women Act helping action to do, like in there, that it was supposed to have been passed in 2018 and it expired and the uh, House passed it, the US House passed it, over a year ago and April 4th of last year and the Senate hasn't done anything useful with it. They're trying to get the gun rallies. I mean, the NRA interests captured, which they shouldn't be. And so um, we want them to add some of these provisions into the fourth COVID bill that they're passing. And so I sent you an email about that. So if you could do those two things, that would be great. Um, Galia, can you please put that in the chat? because uh, we can send the chat to everyone. Um, Put the it's an, it's the a chat. full email, so it's, oh, I mean, no. I can send you a link to the missing and murdered women's, indigenous women's event here, but Good. the other things like a whole email. Yeah, the first one, do that, that's great. Okay, yes, I will okay. do that. Randa? Uh, I just wanna say that uh, when Michael sings, uh, the, because we are on air at some point, it's just it's important to know that Willie Nelson wrote the melody, and uh, Michael uh, wrote many of these astonishing lyrics replacing Willie's. So that's all just for copyright. If somebody gets their dance in a twist about using, you know. Thank you, and we're gonna um, we're gonna depend on Gary to put Randa up on the screen so that you can read the lyrics. No, 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 no. The lyrics are in the chat. Yeah. If you just go back up to the chat somewhere around the top. Okay. You're going to see all the lyrics. Where it says, if you don't like who's in there, yeah. vote them out. That's right. There they are. Yep. Remember, Karen, because you thought it wouldn't work. 
Yes, I'm okay. sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. Just. I have a quick question. Yeah. And that is, um, Stay Home NC is our digital response to um, to open up NC or whatever, reopen. Is that the only way we can, besides writing to Cooper, the only way we can really um, organize around resisting these reopened people is stay at home NC? Is that the digital group? Um, you did you get the email from uh, that? Uh, I, I, okay, I forward her that email. Um, so it, it, you should have gotten an email today that has Brianna's plan. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but also, I just I think you. I just want to mention one other thing, which is the North Carolina platform um, mm -hmm. for. Uh, economic and social survival um which the link is in the tiny letter and i'll put it in the chat box um they're a wonderful broad-based multi-racial very exciting coalition and they're going to be pre presenting their platform to uh the democrats of the general assembly like today and then to the whole general assembly on the 28th they want 5,000 individual signatures so sign on as an individual, and if you're associated with the group, um, sign on as your group, please. They're great, and you'll love their platform. I I helped write number five, <laughs> and and Mike helped wrote, write one of them too. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Ready to sing? Sure. Do we? Uh, well, do we, it's, uh, it's Susan first. Oh well, no, Susan's after we sing. Uh, sorry. Okay. I'm going to mute everybody except the singers, and the singers have to unmute themselves. I'm the singer. Yes, yeah, so you should unmute. You don't like who's in their gold mouth. That's what election day is all about. The superstar we got is called Battle Fox. If you don't like it, it's in there, oh, mouth. Oh, mouth. Oh, mouth. When they're gone, singing dead and shot. We'll bring some new ones in and we'll find us hope again. You don't like me, you don't like me, you don't like Let's get to work, yeah, we sure know how. Be fierce, love strong, protect the future now. All those clowns playing politics, just tell them where we're we'll sick in November 3rd. You don't like me, you don't like me, you don't like me, you don't like me, and when they're gone, sing and dance and shout. We'll bring some great ones in and we'll find a soul. Again. And if we you don't get in there, Yeah, mail in ballots sure would help things out. Trump will put election day in doubt. Let's end the lies and fraud. Restore the rule of law. Just need an honest chance to go the mouth. Yeah, go the mouth. Go the mouth. And when they're gone, sing and twist and shout. Yeah, we'll bring some great ones in and find us hope again. Because we don't like to be there, go the mouth. It's just the swamp that serves the rich. Let's in the be like like this. Get the White House sanitized. That nasty virus, Trump. He's got to be sanitized. And we don't like who's in there. Hold them out. Hold them out. Hold them out. And when they're gone, sing and twist and shout. We'll bring some new again, and we'll have hope again. 
Cause we don't like who's in there Vote him out Yeah, we don't like who's in there Vote him out Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Randa. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week. Be safe. Be happy. Be kind. And as we leave our precious time together, I'm mindful that this midday hour in many uh, traditions is the hour of midday uh, pause midday prayer for those who pray, a chance to rest, absorb what has happened so far in the day, let it settle in, let it inspire us. This is the hour of illumination. And the sun may not be super bright today, but we have definitely been illumined. I invite you to carry the power, the passion, the courage, the hope that we have shared this midday with you into the remainder of the day. Friends, shine on. Amen. I bow to you. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thanks, Susan. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Susan. Oh, you're still muted because you unmuted you and Michael and Randa, and they made it. You made yourselves muted again. Karen, have a good one. Okay, you're ready. Thank, you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, everyone, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask you something, Bye. Karen? Yes. I sent an email to Jewel and sent you a copy, but yours bounced back. I sent it to Okay, they're going into personal stuff, so I'll make sure. I've got them muted and turned off, and that will be uh, that. That will be it for this version of uh, Tuesdays with Tell Us the... Uh, uh, Virtual protest for April 21st, 2020, brought to you by those of us here, which pretty much is me, on the Triangle Talk Show. Okay, I'm going to make this all go away from all the streams, and uh, I'll see you next week at 11.30 uh, uh, on Tuesday for the next virtual protest, because they're not going back out on the streets the way the Open NC folks are. So, see you next Tuesday, and see you so whenever we get on here on the Triangle Talk Show. I'm Gary Pierce, over and out.